There are two views about where man has come from. One view has man evolving up from the animal by a long series of evolutionary changes until we get up today to where we're supposed to be the most technically advanced, the smartest, the most uh, high up that, that has ever been here. And it always seemed to me if that view were correct, then the further we went into the past, the more primitive ought man to be. But what does science show us? Science shows us the further we go into the past, the higher was the level of science and technology. We think we're so smart today because we have electricity. They had electricity thousands of years ago. We've dug up their batteries. They used copper and iron. We use carbon and zinc, but any chemist will tell you copper and iron makes a good battery. They had computational devices and so on. And I thought about that. What about what I was taught, that man has come up from the animal with the idea that as we go into the past, the further we go into the past, the higher was the level of science and technology. And I thought about that. And I realized that the idea that man has come up from the animals, evolutionism, nice story to say that man has come up from the animal, but my question was, does it agree with reality? Does that story agree with reality? So I thought I'd better do a little scientific research. In my textbooks, while I was going through school, grade school, high school, university, so on, I'd seen a diagram of a series of skulls from clearly what is an animal skull with everything in between to clearly what is a human skull. And when I saw that in my textbooks, that was supposed to make me think that here is evidence that man has come up from the animal. Yes, this is a real animal skull. Yes, this is a real human skull. What my textbook didn't mention was these in-between ones are not real. They are plastic models of what should be there if man had come from the animal. And I was irritated when I discovered that. <laughs> the National Geographic, which isn't a creationist magazine, <laughs> as many of you realize, had an article a while back on the Old of I Gorge where we found so many human skulls. And in the National Geographic, they so show Zin Janthropus and uh, a link supposedly between animal and man. And in the Na National Geographic, they have a line down to the layer where that skull was found, Zin Janthropus. Let me ask you a question. If man came up from the animal, if we dug further down into the layers, would there be more animal-like or more anim human-like? More animal-like. What did we find below Zinjanthropus? Homo habilis. More modern remains found below Zinjanthropus, exactly backwards of what evolutionism would teach. National Geographic mentioned it. They didn't comment on it. Here's Newsweek, the way we were. And here is a sketch of after studying over 2,000 skulls, this is a sketch of what scientists now believe Neanderthal man, caveman, looked like. We now know that Neanderthal man was not primitive man. He was the ancestors of modern day Dutch, German, Scandinavians, etc. Fascinating book recently came out by Jack Quozo, Buried Alive. Who is Jack Quozo? He is an orthodontist, a world class orthodontist, a man who studies jaws and teeth to see how they go together. And he decided to take his equipment, x ray equipment, etc over to Europe and study the jaws that have been used to show that man has come from the animal. And in every case he found out that, because he knows how jaws and teeth go together, they had been changed to show that man had related to the animal. They weren't reporting the real actual evidence. And one of my favorite ones in his book is the Broken Hill Man skull. What do you notice about that skull? Got a hole in it, a bullet hole in it. Uh, a bullet hole, you can tell because when a bullet goes through, it goes in a straight path. Here's a steel rod showing you the entrance point and the exit point. And as a bullet goes through, it expands, so the exit point has to be larger. A bullet hole in a cave van skull? <laughs> uh, you can see why his book causes quite a stir. And now, don't raise your hands, but if I were to just ask you, I suspect you would raise your hands and say that you considered yourself superior to caveman, wouldn't you? Now, don't say anything. Uh, <laughs> caveman had a larger brain capacity than modern man. Modern man's about 1,400 cubic centimeters. 
Neanderthal man about 1,600 cubic centimeters. I don't know that brain size means anything, but evolutionism has said if you have a larger brain, you're smarter. So the people today aren't as smart as our ancestors, by that criteria anyway. They had greater manual dexterity. Look at their bones and like the thumb and the fingers, how they went together. They had better manual dexterity. And they had less wimpy muscles. <laughs> And their enzymes were superior. They had higher, we have analyzed in some cases the enzyme systems, ours have degraded. They were healthier, they were better in, in every way that we can check it out. The bone peddlers, how leading paleontologists hype their findings to uh, promote all these ideas. And in his book, and also on the back cover of his book, he lists the skulls that have been found to try to show that man has come from the animal. For example, Neanderthal man was discovered 1856. Who discovered it and when it was disproved? And he goes right down through the list. Homo habilis, habilis Lucy, every single fossil that has ever been found to try to show that man has come from the animal has now been disproved. In addition to the fact that there's zero fossil evidence that man has come from the animal, man is also an artifact leaving creature. We leave behind evidence of the things that we do. For example, this pottery is, th that pottery is, that's 5,000 year old pottery. Pottery was fine grained and a metallic hardness. We didn't even learn how to, to, uh, to make that type of material until modern times when Corning came out with pyroceram. It, it's starting to leak out a little bit. So there's a whole new area of science that's come up in the last several years. It's called the puzzle of oop arts, the science of oop arts, which is a condensation of the words out of place artifacts. Now, if you find a very advanced skull in the far distant past, or you find a high tech item like a battery, electric battery, in the distant past, that's an out of place artifact. It shouldn't be there because the common belief of our culture, as it's been taught evolutionism, as I was taught, that man in the past should be primitive and we should be advanced. So there's a whole new area of science that oop arts has come out in the last several years. The Western world especially has taught that man has come up from the animal and, and things in the past should be primitive. But scientific finds show exactly the opposite. And the flood came and totally destroyed all that civilization, all that technology, but not the memory that it could be done or even some of the records or directions. They had to rebuild after the flood, but they didn't have to reinvent all that technology. So we see in Genesis that the, the, the ark landed in the Middle East, Mount Ararat region, down in the Mesopotamian area there, Iraq and Turkey and so on, back in the Caspian Sea. Here's an object, what would you say that was? Steamroller, yes. And you can see it's got, it's made out of ceramic, little instrument panel, little man inside, big puzzle in archeology. span How could they have known how to do this 1,700 years before we discovered how to do it? How about the Incas? Want to look now at the border between Bolivia and Peru. At the time of Pizarro's arrival in 1532, the Inca realm extended 2,300 miles, had an estimated population of five to eight million people. And we went down there to look at those ruins, right beside Lake Titicaca. And you'll notice the reed rafts, same kind of reed they have in Egypt. And we see the Egyptian symbols there. Sacsayhuaman, ancient uh, capital of the Incas. Look at their stones, perfectly carved. And some of them are large. That one behind us there, the estimated weight in excess of 100 tons. How big is 100 tons? Here's the biggest crane on earth today, manufactured down at the Tri-Cities area. Huge caterpillar tracks to move it. There's my special lady standing by one of those tracks. This is the biggest crane we make, and it'll lift 2,000 tons. They move 20,000 tons. And their calendar is interesting, still works today, more accurate than ours. How about the Mayans? We're just now discovering their ruins. What did they do? They built pyramids. Teotihuacan, Pyramid of the Sun. Fine Caucasian features. 
and Asian teachers. They had contact with all the world. And they said, these are primitive people who hadn't developed the wheel yet. I had great difficulty believing they hadn't invented the wheel yet when their toys had wheels on them. <laughs> we have discovered now that they were building these things at the same time the Egyptians were building their pyramids. Interesting article came out in Atlantic Monthly. The diffusionists have landed. You've probably heard those crackpot theories about ancient visitors to North America. Guess what? And it documents these things. The diffusionists, these were people who said Columbus didn't do it. The diffusionists have a habit of asking awkward questions. Who carved ancient Iberian script into a stone in West Virginia? Why would the Ten Commandments appear in Old Hebrew on a tablet in New Mexico? Yes, those are awkward questions.